Today, we're talking about between groups and within groups experimental designs and what that means for statistical analysis. Stay tuned. For our subscribers, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, liking and subscribing helps a lot and it's free. Now let's get into some science. How you design an experiment has a big impact on the statistical analyses available for you to use. Decisions like what kind of scale to use, how many conditions there are, and so on determine whether you need to use a chi-squared test, a t-test, an ANOVA, and etc. One of the most important experimental design decisions you make is whether you will use a within groups design or a between groups design. So what's the difference? Well, the short version is this. Between groups designs are for when you have multiple conditions in an experiment with different people in each group. For example, you let a group of 15 people pet a cat. Same cat? No, no, I think everybody should get their own cat. If you have 15 people petting cats and another group who just looks at pictures of cats as a control group, then you might measure their anxiety uh, before giving them a math test. Two conditions, two separate groups of participants. A within groups design involves measuring the same participants multiple times. Maybe you have 15 people pet a cat, then measure their anxiety before a math test, then you bring those same 15 people back next week and have them look at pictures of cats and measure their anxiety again. Then you can compare how they changed over time. Now this is called a repeated measures design and it's a version of a within subjects design. All of the participants experienced all of the experimental conditions. You can even have a combination of within groups and between groups designs called mixed methods. Neither approach is right or wrong. Both can be useful depending on what it is you're trying to measure. There are different costs and benefits to each approach. Between groups designs require more people because you need participants for multiple groups. The participants have more variability between them or error because you've got different individuals in each group and they all have their own unique backgrounds. On the other hand, between groups designs can often be completed without having to bring people back at a later time, avoiding the risk that some might not come back. Within groups designs are more sensitive because they have less variability between the conditions. This makes sense because even though people change over time, me now is more similar to me one week from now than say another person would be. Because I share all but one week of life experience with future me. This means you may not need to recruit as many participants since each one will be able to participate in all of the experimental conditions serving as their own baseline. The downside is it may take longer for each participant to go through all of those conditions and sometimes experience in one condition can influence performance in the others. Now that's called a carryover effect. Let's say I want to figure out the best method to teach somebody how to yo-yo. So I design an experiment and I have my participants use different teaching methods to learn how to yo-yo. If they go through one yo-yo task, they may be more tired by the time they get to the second one. That means fatigue or even boredom might result in a carryover effect influencing their performance on the second test. Furthermore, they might already know more about yo-yos in the second task because they've already been learning about it, so that might skew my results. Now this is sometimes called a practice effect. So within groups designs, you have to be really careful uh, to control for practice effects and fatigue and other carryover effects. So you have to think carefully about what your needs are as you design experiments. Now, when you get to your statistical analysis of your results, make sure you choose a statistical test based on your experimental design. For example, between groups designs should be analyzed using independent samples t-tests and ANOVAs, whereas within groups designs might need to use a paired samples t-test or a repeated measures ANOVA. Now you know the basics of within and between groups designs, 
Have a stats question? Leave a comment below. We've got more videos on psychology coming up. And after you hit the like button, consider subscribing to stay up to date on all things psychology related. Until next time, keep thinking. When I first said it, 15 cats sounded like a lot, but I bet it's a lot easier than I realized to make that happen. Thank you.